What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Today is the third video in our series on execution plans and specifically we're going to be taking a look at how to read an execution plan. In case you've missed parts one and two, I've linked to them in the description below. And if you have already seen them, well, let's dive into reading execution plans. Execution plans show you the steps that SQL Server uses to execute your query. Each icon in this graphical execution plan is known as an operator. And the way you read an execution plan is by starting at the top right most operator and then making your way to the left. You kind of just follow the path of arrows from one operator to the next. When you reach a join or concatenation operator where you have multiple branches flowing into a single operator, right? That's when you would then kind of move down to the next branch, go all the way back to your right and start reading the operators from right to left again. So in short, you can read execution plans from right to left, top to bottom. By following the arrows of the plan right to left, you're following the flow of data in the plan. And while the calling structure of these operators actually has the operators going from left to right, each operator releases a row of data to the operator that it's connected to to the left of it until all of the rows of data for that operator have been released. And you keep on doing this until you reach the top left operator, which is usually a select or an insert or update, delete, something like that. So the next thing to pay attention to in this execution plan are the arrows themselves. Like I mentioned, the arrows show you which way the data is flowing, but they tell you more information than just that. In a SQL Server Management Studio execution plan, the size of those arrows also indicate the relative size of the data. When troubleshooting your execution plan, these arrow sizes can tip you off to where you maybe are receiving more data than you expected in your plans. Brent Ozar actually wrote a great post about this recently, about how the arrow sizes mean different things between your estimated and your actual execution plans. In short, the arrow size represents the number of rows that are flowing between operators right to left in an estimated execution plan, but in an actual execution plan, it represents the size of rows read by the operator to the right of the arrow. And he wrote up a great post on this. I've linked to it in my blog post below, so be sure to go check that out if you want more information. All right, so in addition to these arrows and all the different operator icons in our plan, you can actually hover over all of these different objects to learn more about them. So as an example, if we hover over one of these operators, we'll not only see a description of what that operator is doing, but it will also show us the number of rows SQL Server expected to read during this step versus what it actually read. If you're using the actual execution plan, you know what predicates were applied, what warning messages exist, and so on. And we can even get some more information about our different operators if we select the operator and bring up the properties window, which is just the F4 key in SQL Server Management Studio by default. I typically find myself looking in these properties to discover memory and CPU thread usage and what transformation SQL Server is doing as part of my query execution. So if you happen to see things like expression, 1000, whatever, uh, you can usually find what SQL Server, what kind of transformations it's doing for that expression in that properties window. Moving on, the next thing I want to talk about is the cost percentage that's underneath each operator. So that numeric percentage represents the relative cost of that operator to all the other operators in your plan. Using these relative costs can sometimes be a very helpful way of identifying where the uh, least efficient parts of your plan are and where you can focus your attention when troubleshooting performance. These relative costs can sometimes help you troubleshoot where the bottlenecks in your query performance are occurring. And I did say sometimes because these costs, while handy, are not always necessarily accurate. There's a lot of different scenarios where the cost numbers just don't make sense at all. So while they're great to use as you know maybe a starting point, I would never fully rely on them to pinpoint where an issue is. All right, so another thing to be aware of when reading execution plans are these little exclamation point uh, indicators, these yellow exclamation point indicators in the corner of our operators. In this particular query plan, you'll see we have them on a bunch of hash match operators. And if we actually hover over them, we'll learn what they are for. These yellow exclamation point overlays indicate that there's some kind of warning happening on that operator. And in this case, the warning is talking about having to spill to tempdb in order to be able to aggregate all of our data. So obviously spilling to tempdb is usually a very bad thing um, and we want to avoid it. And that's what that little exclamation point is highlighting to us. And it's not just tempdb spills that it highlights. 
It will also highlight things like implicit conversions or uh, excessive or underestimated memory grants. So uh, if you ever see one of those, it's always worth investigating. It doesn't always mean you have to change something. Sometimes they'll be just really inconsequential uh, warnings there, but it's always good to check to see what's going on. And finally, the last thing I wanna point out on these execution plans are the index recommendations. You've probably noticed these at the top of the execution plan, right, in green text with SQL Server telling you, hey, I think you're missing an index. And while it's great that SQL Server is telling us that it thinks the query could be improved if we added an index, these index recommendations are often not great, right? You can usually do a better job by tweaking those indexes yourself, adding more columns to them, either to the key portion or the included column portion, um, or maybe combining them with an existing index on a table. Like maybe you don't need a new index altogether. You can just add one column to an existing index and you'll get the same performance benefit. So while these index recommendations aren't perfect, uh, I do like seeing them and using them as a starting off point for figuring out what index changes I can make to my tables to improve my query performance. And so that's it. Hopefully after watching this, you're now more comfortable understanding what all the different things inside of an execution plan mean. Next week, we'll dive a little deeper into some of the more common operators that I see in execution plans and their performance implications, or at least things to look out for. So be sure not to miss that. And as always, thank you for watching. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe so you don't miss these future execution plan videos and I'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>